Victoria, what's your take on Meta? What a high flyer. Yeah, no, it's going to keep flying high. I think it's still a buy at these prices. You're still about 18, 19% off at its all time highs. And we think all of the products they've launched with Reels and then what they can do with the metaverse. I know the metaverse is kind of a joke right now, but eventually with tie ins with AI and VR, I think that will get going. Look at it. They have three out of 8 billion people logging in every single day, and their ad revenue has continued to increase. So the this dearth of ad revenue spend, I think, is over. You saw that with Google and Meta, and it's a great platform for advertisers to be on. So it's still a buy because they're, they're saying they're going to have 20 percent growth next quarter. Well, let's move on uh, to McDonald's shares higher after the fast food uh, giant topped estimates. The uh, Grimace birthday meal helped drive sales, Victoria. I didn't didn't know anything about that, but uh, but maybe you do. It's a, I mean, it's hard to keep a straight face talking about the grimace effect on our earnings, but it was. They're good at product rollouts. They know their market very well. They've been very strategic with price increases, and they do feel even if some of their foot traffic were to slow, they're going to pick up more traffic from people kind of downsizing from uh, sit-in restaurants to fast casual, and they're still seen as a value deal. Also, you're seeing this growth internationally. Only about 47% of the revenues are U.S.-based. The rest come from international emerging markets. You saw great strength in Europe, including Germany and the U.K. And I think they're going to continue to be strategic. And it's a well-run, well-executed company. You have such consistency across stores. Their marketing's on point, And they have one of the strongest brand names out there right now. So for me, McDonald's is just a steady Eddie blue chip buy. And finally, Southwest Airlines shares. These are down almost 10% today. Despite posting record revenue for the second quarter, the company notes a drop in unit revenue and rising labor costs. Wow, there's a lot of talk about labor these days. Victoria, what do you make of Southwest from here? Yeah, and they are fighting labor. They are one of the only that do not have a pilot's or flight attendant's uh, contract long term. Uh, and they're just struggling because they don't have the international market pickup that you saw like Delta and United uh, report. And also they were a little bit just in line. Everybody else blew it out of the water in Q2 and they came in just in line. So they really need to work on optimizing their fleet, optimizing their pilot scheduling, getting that contract done and, and getting that headwind out of the way. They are pretty good with fuel hedges, but investors are so wary of airlines as a long-term investment because it's bitten them so many times. So I think investors are concerned that you're just not going to see this, this peak profit and this peak travel uh, just continue forward. And Southwest is so exposed to leisure travel, and they're even leaning in harder on leader travel. They're cutting out some of the, the favorite um, kind of corporate travel routes, shorter routes, early morning flights. So if leisure travel sells, they don't have international, and they're tilting away from corporate. So I just see them as the weakest airline right now. Hmm. It's interesting. Uh, the Southwest flights I've been on this summer have been absolutely packed. It stresses me out how they do the boarding where you have to like line up. By the I know. Lines. Yeah. I don't, not my favorite, but it's a fun airline. No. Victoria, thank you very much.